The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Were you born between 1900 and 1910? Then here's a question you've probably asked yourself more than once. Will I be alive in 1975? Well, just think of all the advances in medical science since you first saw the light of day. Sulfur drugs, insulin, and dozens of others. Since 1910, there's been a 68% increase in the proportion of people over 65 years of age in this country. With this percentage growing greater all the time, there certainly is a very good chance that you will be alive in 75. And in exactly 14 minutes, we'll have a suggestion which will show you how life insurance, with the Equitable Life Assurance Society, can help you make the most of this long life that's ahead of you. Tonight's FBI file, The Innocent Thief. Nineteen forty seven has not yet run through a quarter of its allotted number of months. But already there is evidence that the number of spectacular crimes in the nation is on the rise. A community fund is stolen from a strong box in the Midwest. A schoolgirl is kidnapped from her home in the West. A bank in Virginia is robbed for the first time in its sixty five year history. There's no end to the recital, but the pace of the crime wave is quickening. A major crime is committed somewhere in the United States every 21 seconds. And in the course of those crimes, innocent people are involved. Innocent people who are used as pawns by the criminals. That is why the crime wave is a problem belonging not only to your FBI, but also to you. Tonight's file opens in a roadhouse located in the outskirts of a large eastern city. It is after midnight. For the past half hour, a floor show has been in progress. Sonny Everett, master of ceremonies, is just bringing it to a close. Well, folks, that about concludes our little show. But before I leave, I must tell you about a funny thing that happened to me on the way to the club tonight. Oh, will you hear this? It'll kill you. A fella came up to me and said, can you spare something for a cup of coffee? I said, sorry, Mac, all I have is ten pennies. He says, that's okay, buddy. I'll buy drip coffee. Well, folks, I could keep you screaming like this for hours, but right now, everybody dance. Well, May? Huh? What'd you think of it? Hello, Steve. What'd you think of the show? You really want me to tell you? Bad, huh? Awful. I'm gonna murder that agent. What a routine he gave. He said that MC was the greatest performer since Lou Parker. Huh. Look at him, heading right for the bar. That's where he performs best. He's been Forget drunk. Forget him, Steve. But Forget honey, he... a load at table 27. Huh? Guy with the two dames. Oh. Look at that jewelry. Wow. Yeah, real heavy. Thought you might have overlooked it. As a matter of fact, I did. That's what that comedian is doing to me. Look, the guy's calling for his check. Uh-uh. Where's Vinny? Over there with the blonde. Oh. Ben. Ben. <laughs> he hates to walk out on that. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me, Steve? Yeah. Uh, sick of gander at table 27. Huh? Oh, the, the skinny guy with the two old tomatoes? That's right. Hey, look at the ice they're packing. Huh? I want you to look at it. When they leave here, I want you to be right behind them. Walker, let's yeah. have another round here, will you? Look, Sonny, we got to close up. Don't you want a nightcap? No, thanks. 
Then bring a drink for me and me. No, none for me, Sonny. <laughs> well, just so nobody's offended, I'll have one. Okay, but this is positively the finish. I got some news for you, kid. I was finished the day I opened in this joint. Chaser. There you are. Thanks. May? Yeah? You mind if I call you May? No. Say, what's your boyfriend Steve got against me? He just doesn't like your act. What? He doesn't think you're funny. Who does he think he is? The guy that's paying you. <laughs> In the dark, he's paying me. I took the biggest cut of my life to work this dump. Well, that'll certainly teach me a lesson. Well, settle it with him, will you? Yeah, there's plenty I've got to settle with him. Billing, for one thing. I was right in my contract. Star billing. And look what happens. Look outside. There's dancing, liquor, steaks, French fried potatoes, and Sonny Everett. <laughs> the least he could have done was coast on me with the French fried potatoes. Hey. Well, hey. it just shows yeah. you one thing. Come here, will you? You okay, work then. your head off for a guy, get all special material, and what happens? No appreciation. How'd you make out? Come on, the office. Okay. Go ahead. Thanks. May, where's Steve? He went into town. What for? To deposit tonight's receipt. Tell me, how'd you do? Well, take a look. Hey. Yeah. I uh, had some trouble, though. What kind of trouble? Well, I done the job okay, but on the way back here, a state trooper got on my tail. He saw the stick? No, no, I, uh, I was speeding. Well, that was smart. Well, I lost the car. We still could have gotten your license. Yeah, but I didn't use my own car. Who did you use? The comedian. Sonny Everett? Yeah. Where's the car now? Outside in the parking lot. Oh, that trooper's liable to come by here. No matter whose car you use, he could still... Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Wasn't that Sonny Everett out at the bar? Yeah. Why? You stay here. I've got an idea that'll fix the whole thing. In the nearby city, in an FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is also discussing the jewel robbery. I was just about leaving here, Ross, when the report on the robbery came in. And this will be an all-night session for you, huh? Looks that way. Mm -hmm. What are the details on the job, Jim? Well, a man and two women were driving home from a roadhouse out on Route 24, a place called the Columbia Inn. Yeah? They came to a lonely intersection, observed the stop sign, a car pulled up beside them. The man jumped out and pointed a gun at them. Was he alone? It appeared that way, yes. He ordered the women to strip off their jewelry. They obeyed. Then he took their car keys and drove away. Well, what was the value of the jewelry? Well, it's estimated between twenty and twenty-five thousand dollars. Wow. Uh, could they describe this man? No, he masked his face with a handkerchief. But they did describe his car. Well, what about it? A dark blue or black coupe. The right front fender was smashed. The right door heavily dented. Any further leads on the bandit? Well, a state trooper reported chasing a black coupe in that vicinity. He was after him for speeding. Well, what happened? He lost him when he went across the state line. That's why we were called into the case. Mm -hmm. Did he get the license? Yes, it's being checked now. Oh, excuse me, Russ. Right. Special Agent Taylor. Hello, Mr. Taylor. This is Sergeant Leo, Maywood Police. Oh, yes, Sergeant. You fellas looking for a black coupe? Yes. Right fender and door pretty well banged up? That's right. License number 6N274? 6N274. That's the car, Sergeant. Well, we picked it up in a ditch just outside of town. The driver was still behind the wheel. Injured? No, just drunk. Huh? We're holding him here. Well, thanks, Sergeant. I'll be right out there. Is that you, Steve? Yeah. I'm in here in the office. Okay. Everybody go home? Yeah. Let me get back yet? Uh-huh. You nail that stuff? Yeah. Then, where is he? He went out again. What for? He's trying to be a genius. What are you talking about? After he grabbed the jewels, a cop chased him. He ducked the cop and he came back here. Yeah. But he was afraid that the cop might come here after him. That's where the genius Look, comes in. Well, get to the point, will you? He used Sonny Everett's car for the job. Huh? So he's framing Everett. He's going to make it look like he did it. How? Everett was drunk. Yeah. Then he took him out of here and he's going to leave him in his car by the side of the road. Oh, the stupid... I tried to stop him. Where's the jewelry? He took it with him. What for? Steve, I don't know. Did he say he was coming back here? No, he's going home. Well, I'm going into town and see that guy right now. He's 
It's right in here, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Sergeant. Go right ahead. Thanks. Everett. <sighs> come on, Everett, wake up. <sighs> come on, come on, wake up. Oh, okay. This man's from the FBI. He wants to ask you some questions. Huh? He wants to ask you some questions. You mean I'm on again? Never mind the comedy. Was well, that funny? Mr. Everett, the police tell me that you maintain you know nothing at all about the jewel robbery. That's right. That you were found in the car that was used by the thief. The victims have definitely identified it. I know. That car is registered in your name. That's right. It's, it's mine. That's pretty incriminating evidence. I know. Uh, there's one other factor, Mr. Taylor. Yes, Sergeant? This man is the master of ceremonies at the nightclub the victims attended just before they were robbed. Oh. Huh? Well, Everett, what have you got to say to all this? Oh, the, the same thing I, I've been saying for the last two hours. I, I don't know anything about it. It's not a very original answer. Look, all, all I can tell you is this. I, I ain't thinking too good, but I remember being at the club. I, 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 was, I was drinking, drinking a lot. From there on, it's a, it's a blank. Next thing I knew, I, I was picked up in the car. I see. Look, mister, I, I think I can underwrite one thing. The only stuff I ever stole in my life was bows and jokes. I, I didn't cop that jewelry. Sergeant. Yeah? You didn't find any trace of the jewelry around the car? No, we didn't. Well, I guess that'll be all for now. Let's go back to your office, Sergeant. Very well. Uh, what, a, what about me? You stay here. Well, gee, can't I even call my agent? In just a minute. Well, Mr. Taylor, do you think we should prepare formal charges against Everett? No, I wouldn't yet, Sergeant. Why not? Well, for one thing, I have a feeling the circumstantial evidence against him is too pat. And don't forget, the victims didn't think that he resembled the hold-up man at all. Well, then what'll we do with him? Well, let's find out what time that nightclub opens. I want to take Everett out there and see if we can find anything that'll help prove his innocence. Who is it? Me, Steve. Oh. Come on in, Steve. Okay. I, uh, was just going to go to bed. You got the stuff? The ice? Yeah. Sure. It's right here. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not bad. Yeah. Look at the rocks in that pin, huh? Mm-hmm. Stuff must be worth 20 G's. Easy. Mate tells me you had trouble. Yeah. I want to hear about it. Well, I, I got in a little jam, but by some real smart thinking, I got out again. You mean by framing the act? That's right. Pretty clever, huh? <laughs> you don't think you'll get away with it, do you? Why not? The guy was blind drunk. Lots of drunks remember things. He's liable to be singing to the cops right now. What can he tell them? That you planted him in the car. Oh, who'd believe that? The cops. My word is as good as his. But your record ain't. You made a real sucker move, Jimmy. You uh, think I ought to blow town or something? No. What else, then? I got that all figured out. Well, wherever you go, you're liable to be picked up. And knowing you, Vinny, if you're picked up, you're liable to talk. Oh, you're crazy. And if you talk, that gets me in trouble. Now, look, Steve. This is the only way to settle it. Now, wait a minute, Steve. Thanks for being stupid. <laughs> We will return in just a moment to tonight's file, which shows how your FBI helps provide security for your country. Now, let's talk briefly about another kind of security. Security for those who want to be independent as they grow older. Okay, Mr. Cross, sounds swell, but I'm no rich man. What with taxes and high prices, I haven't saved a cent. So how can I afford to do anything about being independent 20 years from now? You'd be surprised what you can do. In the Equitable Society are thousands of men earning no more than you do, and they're looking forward to complete independence in their 60s 
through an equitable life assurance society independent 60s plan. Well, if that's a fact, I'd like to hear some more about this plan. The independent 60s plan of the equitable life assurance society has these three features. First, it costs considerably less than you probably think, especially if you're covered by Social Security. Second, you can create your retirement estate for the full amount the moment you sign the contract. You don't spend years wondering whether or not you're going to accumulate enough money to be independent in your 60s. You're sure of it because it's guaranteed by the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Third, this equitable plan gives you a definite goal and provides you with a practical method for reaching that goal. Yes, there's nothing finer than being independent in your 60s, being your own boss. Say, this is beginning to interest me a lot. Well, then get in touch with an Equitable Life Assurance Society representative. He'll give you the facts on the independent 60s plan and let you make up your own mind. Look in your phone book for the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Innocent Thief. To escape just punishment, the average criminal will offer anyone as a sacrifice to the law. His friend, his benefactor, or his mother. All that's important to the criminal is that he escapes detection. Because to the criminal, there's really only one crime he can commit. And that crime is getting caught. His very livelihood depends on his taking what does not belong to him. And the selfish instinct, the wild greed that drives him to commit the crimes he does, also drives him to attempt to escape blame by sacrificing an innocent person's good name. So your FBI advises you never to meddle with criminals. And when you find a criminal, do your duty and call your local police department. You owe that to your fellow Americans and to yourself. Our FBI file continues. Twelve hours have elapsed. Special Agent Jim Taylor and Sonny Everett, the innocent suspect, have gone out to the Columbia Inn. They're just entering the owner's office. Sit down, fellas. Thank you. Mr. Harrison, where's May? Oh, she'll be right in. Mr. Harrison, you already know about the holdup. Yeah, I read about it in the papers. Well, then I suppose you know the police are holding Everett here as a suspect. Yeah, that's tough. You looking for me, Steve? Uh, come on in, May. Close the door. Okay. Now, this is this is Mr. Taylor. He's from the FBI. Oh, How do hello. You know? And you know Sonny, of course. Yeah, sure. Hiya, May. The suspect in a holdup. He's oh. trying to clear himself. He thought maybe you could help him. I'm glad to. How, Sonny? Well, May, I'm trying to piece together what I did last night. When I was first arrested, I couldn't remember anything. Parts of it have come back. Maybe you can fill me in on the rest. Well, I'll try, Sonny. Well, after the last show, I started drinking. Then Steve here went out. That I remember good. Uh Uh-huh. Then you came along. I was talking to you and the bartender. That's right. Then Vinny came in. Huh? He called you back here. You talked a while. And then he came out and took me to my car. Oh, wait a minute. That ain't so. But I remember. Vinny left here early. He never did come back. When you went out, Sonny, you went out alone. But, May, I know Vinny was here. Look, who was drinking? You or me? Where is this man, Vinny? Perhaps we can talk to him and get his version. Well, he won't be in tonight. He works here, doesn't he? And that's right, but he called a while ago and said he was taking a few days off, uh, going out of town. Mr. Taylor, I bet anything that guy's trying to duck out. Of what? Of being nailed for the robbery. Ah, oh, just a minute, He's son. the guy that framed Hold me. Hold it, Everett. Know... Let me handle this, please. Mr. Harrison, did Vinny say where he was going? Well, no, he didn't. Well, we'll just have to wait until he returns. But he's liable That'll to be... be all for now. Thank you both for your cooperation. <laughs> Special Agent Scott. Hello, Ross. Jim Taylor. Oh, hello, Jim. How'd you make out of the roadhouse? The owner and his girl tried their best to implicate Everett. They wouldn't back up his story? No, not a bit. 
Well, what about this man Vinny ever talked about? He wasn't there. He presumably has gone out of town. I see. I talked to a parking lot attendant, however. He said he saw Vinny carry Everett out to his car last night. Everett couldn't even walk. Well, that certainly should prove his innocence. Yes. Well, have you any idea where this Vinny can be found? Well, Everett knows where he lives. We're going over there now. <laughs> Oh, come on in. How's business? Fair. Yeah, it's the weather, I guess. If you're looking for an excuse, you can blame it on that. Honey, rainy nights, you never... Look, let's face it. This ain't exactly a gold mine. Yeah, that's right. Well, why do we hang on to it? For the suckers we promote. That score last night wasn't bad. It wasn't good either. What do you mean? Well, gee, you had to kill Vinny to come out even. That was his fault. That don't make no difference. Look, Steve, let's get out of this, huh? How? Well, you taking those jewels to the fence yet? No, I was going over there now. Well, look, if the payoff is good, we can take the dough, go away, and give this joint back to the Indians. Vinny can't be home, Mr. Taylor. Even my audience couldn't sleep through that. Well, then I'd better try this key. You think it's all right? Oh, I picked up a search warrant on the way over here. I mean, do you think that the key will fit? Oh. That should answer your question. Come on. All right. It's a very small scatter. I, uh, I've been here before. Everett, were you and Vinny friendly? <laughs> Are you kidding did you ever catch my act? No, oh, I'm afraid I haven't. Well, the routine is roughly like this. I open with a few fast topicals, segue into a patter tune, then I do my imitations. Now, ordinarily, Mr. Taylor, if the audience uh, Everett, is just a... uh, you were going to tell me whether you were friendly with Vinny. Well, I was coming to that. Oh. An act like mine, and what do you think a bum like that Vinny does? Sleeps through the imitations. Then you weren't very friendly. Friendly? Jackie Gleason has got a routine about guys like him. Uh, his opening Wait joke starts a... Huh? Come here. Look in this drawer. What is it? Women's purses, two of them. Well, what about them? Well, judging by this card, I'd say they completely exonerate you. How? Here's the name of one of the women who was held up. This is her purse. Then Vinnie did do the job. Yes, and he... Well, hold it. Hey, what's with the Jolson? With the what? Down on one knee. Oh. I'm just examining this spot on the floor. Well... Been scrubbed with water, but around the edges it looks suspiciously like blood stains. What? Yes. I couldn't say for sure until it's analyzed, but I've seen enough of it in the past. Hey, do you think Vinny was knocked off or something? Well, that'd be quite logical. Ever did Vinny smoke cigars? No. Why? It's one here in this ashtray. Steve was the only guy who used them. Oh. Any idea what kind he smoked? Some fancy Cuban kind. He was always flashing them. Hey, look at this band. Would this be it? Yeah. Yeah, that's what he smoked. Look, Mr. Taylor, catch me up on this. I'm about 20 lanes behind you. Well, up to now, of course, it's all conjecture. But putting all the elements together, it's highly possible that Vinny was murdered. Huh? And it's also a pretty good guess that Steve is the one who killed him. So that's it. Where's the body? Well, I imagine Steve would be clever enough to make sure that was cleverly disposed of. Then how can you prove Vinny was murdered? Well, without a corpse, it's just about impossible. But I would... Wait a minute. Huh? I've got an idea, and it might work. Everett, is that really a good act you do? Oh, now, look. You're going to get a chance to prove it. Hi, honey. Well, I thought you'd never get back. What's wrong? Nothing. I was just worrying about you carrying all that jewelry. There's so many thieves around. Don't ever worry about me. Did you see the fence? Yeah. What do you offer you? Eight thousand. For all that? Well, you said it ain't worth much more than twenty. I thought this was going to be a real big score. Well, maybe it's just as well. Why? I've been thinking over that going away deal. Yeah? It'd be the wrong move to make right now. Our best bet is to stay here until the heat's on. Oh, no. Now, look, honey, that's what we're doing. Oh. I'll get it. Well? Is that you, May? Yeah. This is Vinnie, May. 
Hmm? I said this is Vinny. No. I just called to see how things were going out there. It can't be. I just wanted to find no. out. No. What's the matter? That was Vinny. What? Vinny! No. Look, man. I know his voice. You told me he was dead. That's right. But he just talked to me. Honey, believe me, I killed the guy. I took his body and buried it right out in the back of the joint. Thanks. Huh? FBI. You heard his statement, Sergeant? Yes, sir, I did. What is this? I understand you thought Sonny Everett did a very bad act. Well, his impersonation of your late friend Vinny on the phone just now was good enough to send you to the chair for murder. Steve Harrison was turned over to local authorities who tried and convicted him on the charge of first-degree murder. May, his girlfriend, was prosecuted for complicity in the jewel robbery and sentenced to a long term in prison. Tonight's case in the files of your FBI emphasizes a very important point about the workings of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Of the people arrested last year by your FBI, 97% were convicted when they appeared in court. Your FBI is justifiably proud of that record because it implies a thoroughness in the gathering of evidence. But your FBI is also very proud of the several cases in its files that resemble tonight. Cases in which your FBI not only apprehended the guilty parties, but also lifted the suspicion that had been placed on an innocent victim. For that, too, is part of protecting you, the American people. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. A little while ago, I gave you a few facts about the Independent 60s plan of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. To get full information, ask your Equitable Society representative questions like these. Exactly how much will the plan cost me? The Equitable Man has the answer. How will it dovetail with my Social Security? He's got the answer to that, too. What income will it give me in my 60s? Your Equitable Society representative will give you the exact figure. Ask him to drop around tomorrow for a friendly visit. Find him in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Divorced Child. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI. is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Divorced Child, on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.